to the world of Kospolich, the world of hatchable marine refrigeration. Your vessel is now part of an international fleet which has chosen the best in design, construction, and operation of onboard cooling, chilling, and freezing. Now let's prepare to get your unit aboard. First, the tools. All you need is a screwdriver and two wrenches. It's that simple, and they are furnished with your unit. Now follow these step-by-step -step instructions, and as you do, remember that our polarized wiring was pre-installed, so it can't be plugged into the wrong place. Step 1. Remove the crating material and check for any freight damage. Step 2. Get ready to run the unit before disassembly. But first, open the doors and cut the tie wraps holding the door heater wires. Install those heater wires around the perimeter of the doors. Step 3. Plug the unit into a proper voltage receptacle. The unit should begin to operate. But if not, remove the front grill by picking up on the grill and pulling out the bottom then pulling down on the grill, allowing it to clear the top clip and pushing the toggle switch to on. Care must be taken when removing the front grill due to the leads for the cold well switch being connected. The grill should be removed and while holding the grill, reach behind it and disconnect the two leads for the cold well switch. With the doors now open, the interior light should come on the evaporator fan motor should have started and the condenser and condenser fan motor should be operable. Everything's okay? Good. Now let's take it apart, and preferably in a clear, workable area. If your unit has display, sneeze shield, or tray rails, you must remove them now and store them in a safe place. All mounting connections will be made with machine screws that are drilled and tapped into the unit. So use the flat blade screwdriver and remove the screws as required. Begin by opening the doors. Remove the door heaters. Coil and secure them with tie wraps or something similar. This will keep the heater wires from getting damaged during this process. Also at this time, push the light switch button in and place a piece of strong tape over the switch to keep it in the recessed position. This will keep the switch from getting damaged during the disassembly and reassembly process. Remove the grill. With the 3 8 inch nut driver or the flat blade screwdriver, Remove the screw that secures the condensing unit to the mounting clip in the front of the unit. Now slide the condensing unit out of the unit and place it on the deck in front of the unit. Using the same procedure as was used to locate and disconnect the refrigeration lines in the back of the evaporator, disconnect the lines in the back of the condenser. With the two three-quarter inch open end wrenches, you can now remove the refrigeration lines from the unit. Remember, hold the male fitting steady and turn the female fitting counterclockwise. Next, locate the power cord running from the condensing unit to the stainless steel junction box and disconnect it. Then move the condensing unit to a safe place. Locate the stainless steel junction box mounted in the refrigeration compartment above the condensing unit. With the one quarter inch nut driver, remove the four quarter inch screws securing the box to the top. All electrical leads in the rear of the junction box must be disconnected. These should have been color coded at the factory for ease of reassembly. And remove the junction box. Using the flat blade screwdriver, remove the hinge covers. In the case of a unit with multiple doors, the doors should be marked at this time to assure that the doors are replaced 
in the correct openings. Starting with the right door, using the Phillips screwdriver, remove the hinge screws attaching the door to the cabinet. Do not loosen or remove the screws attaching the hinge to the door. Remove only the top and bottom screw from each hinge. And then with someone holding the door, remove the center screws from each hinge, starting at the bottom and then the top. Now remove the door and store it in a safe place. Now repeat the same process with the other door. Next, cut two pieces of packaging material placing them in the bottom of the unit. This will protect the interior surface from any possible damage caused by dropping tools. Now locate the refrigeration lines in the back of the evaporator inside of the refrigerated storage compartment. Using the two three-quarter inch open end wrenches, disconnect the lines. Hold the male fitting steady and turn the female fitting counterclockwise. There should be enough play in the lines to allow the fittings to be separated without losing refrigerant. Go to the rear of the refrigeration compartment and locate the refrigeration lines that run to the cold well section. Disconnect these fittings using the same procedure as was used on the evaporator and condenser. Using the two three-quarter inch open end wrenches, hold the male fitting while turning the female fitting counterclockwise. Using the same procedure, disconnect the fittings for the refrigeration lines that run into the refrigerated storage compartment. Remove the coiled refrigeration lines to a safe place, being careful not to bend these lines or stack anything on top of them. Slide the refrigeration line set out of the storage compartment and remove it to a safe place, being careful not to bend these lines or stack anything on top of them. Using the cam lock wrench, a 3 8 inch Allen wrench, start on the left end in the refrigeration compartment and loosen the cam lock located on the top of the left end. Then going into the cabinet, Beginning on the upper right hand side, loosen all cam locks that connect the top to the ends and back. Now remove the cam locks on the center mullion. With one person positioned on each end, pick the top straight up. Care should be taken at this step because of the weight of the top section. It may be necessary in some cases to use more than two people to perform this function. Care should also be taken not to damage the refrigeration lines on the top section. Before removing the top, make sure that the door heaters have been coiled and secured. Next, release the bottom cam lock on the center mullion and remove it. Now remove the right end. Starting on the rear top, loosen the cam locks going toward the bottom and then along the bottom from back to front. Remove the right end and place it in a safe spot. Next, remove the left end of the storage compartment using the same procedure as the right end. You should now be ready to remove the rear panel. Begin by loosening the cam locks, first the lower right side going from right to left. One person should position himself on the left hand side and one on the right side as both persons lift the panel free. All that remains is the base frame assembly with the left end panel still attached. Usually at this point the unit has been disassembled enough to get into most areas. If this is the case, then care should be taken not to damage the end panel that remains connected to the base. It is always recommended to remove this panel. To remove this panel, tilt the base to the rear and remove the four machine screws located under the base frame 
using the flat blade screwdriver. Reassembly. You've moved all parts below deck and you're now ready to reassemble your Kospelich unit in its permanent spot in the galley. It is most important that you first be assured of the presence of a level surface to begin the process of reassembling. And with that knowledge, place the base frame assembly down. Now, run a bead of silicone on both the interior and exterior stainless flanges of the base frame. A bead of silicone should always be placed on one side of all mating stainless steel surfaces during the assembly. This will eliminate any chance of air leakage and still allow for future disassembly if necessary. You are now ready to begin the reassembly. Install the rear panel first, making sure that the cam lock is positioned on the correct side of the pin Place the bottom of the rear panel on the base frame assembly. Using the cam lock wrench, turn the cam locks clockwise until fully tightened. Then tighten all cam locks, starting from the right and going to the left. Next up, the left end. Again, making sure that all cam locks are positioned on the correct side of the pin place the left end on the base frame assembly. Begin by starting from the lower front, going along the bottom of the panel, and then up the rear, and tighten all cam locks. Now install the right hand end. Place the end panel on the base frame, again making sure that the cam locks are positioned on the correct side of the pins. Starting on the bottom of the panel in the front, Begin tightening the cam locks going toward the rear, then vertically along the rear panel. Tilting the cabinet to the rear, install the outside left end panel by reattaching the four machine screws under the base. The next move is to place the center mullion on the guide pins and tighten the bottom cam lock. You are now ready to install the top. One person should be on each end of the cabinet, making sure that the cam locks are positioned on the correct side of the pins and set the top on top of the cabinet. After assuring yourselves that all cam locks are positioned correctly, tighten all cam locks, beginning with the forward right hand side, working all the way around to the front left hand side. Next, tighten the two cam locks on the center mullion. After all cam locks are tightened, be sure not to forget the cam locks in the refrigeration compartment. Now reinstall the electrical junction box in the condensing unit compartment. From the rear of the cabinet, connect all leads going to the electrical junction box. You should now release the tie on the door heaters and insert in the groove around the perimeter of the doors. The gray vinyl breaker strip covers around the door perimeter should now be installed. They're labeled to correspond with the breaker strips which are installed on the cabinet. Sides first, then top and bottom. Install the stainless steel electrical junction box in the refrigeration compartment. Reconnect all of the color-coded electrical connections to the stainless steel electrical junction box. Locate the refrigeration line set and carefully insert through the hole in the side of the cabinet. Using the two three-quarter inch open wrenches, connect the lines to the evaporator coil. Hold the male fitting steady, then turn the female fitting clockwise. Now reinstall the drain line tubing on the rear connection of the evaporator coil. Be certain that you make sure the evaporator fan lead inside of the evaporator is connected. It's time now to place the condensing unit on the deck in front of the cabinet. 
Connect the suction and discharge lines to the condensing unit using the two three-quarter inch open end wrenches. While holding the male fitting steady, turn the female fitting clockwise unit tight. From the rear of the unit, reconnect the refrigeration lines to the cold well and also make the connection to the lines that run through the end partition to the evaporator. Next, set the copper P-trap with the attached drain line into the condensate evaporator pan. You should now be able to slide the condensing unit into place. Secure it with the 3 8 inch nut driver or the flat blade screwdriver. It's time now to install the right door. With one person holding the door in place, insert the center screw in the top hinge and tighten. Then insert the center screws in the bottom hinge and tighten. Now insert the remaining screws and tighten strongly. The other door goes on next, repeating the installation process from the first door. You should now install the hinge covers. Next, remove the tape over the light switches of the refrigerator. Now, recheck all electrical and refrigeration connections. Plug the unit into a proper voltage receptacle. Now, with the door open, the lights should come on and the evaporator fan should start. The condenser fan and the condenser should also start up. Once everything is checked out, connect the two leads for the cold well switch and then install the grill by inserting the top and picking up, then placing the bottom in the clips provided and allow them to set completely into the clips. Bring the unit temperature down to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Your Kospelitz unit is now ready to deliver years of uncompromised quality service.